Your doctor has recommended that you have coronary artery bypass surgery. But what does that actually mean? Your heart is located in the center of your chest. It is surrounded by your rib cage and protected by your breastbone. Your heart's job is to keep blood continually circulating throughout your body. The vessels that supply the body with oxygen-rich blood are called arteries. The vessels that return blood to the heart are called veins. Like any other muscle in the body, the heart depends on a steady supply of oxygen-rich blood. The arteries that carry this blood supply to the heart muscle are called coronary arteries. Sometimes these blood vessels can narrow or become blocked by deposits of fat, cholesterol, and other substances collectively known as plaque. Over time, plaque deposits can narrow the vessels so much that normal blood flow is restricted. In some cases, the coronary artery becomes so narrow that the heart muscle itself is in danger. Coronary bypass surgery attempts to correct this serious problem. In order to restore normal blood flow, the surgeon removes a portion of the blood vessel from the patient's leg or chest, most probably the left internal mammary artery and the saphenous vein. Your doctor uses one or both of these vessels to bypass the old diseased coronary artery and to build a new pathway for blood to reach the heart muscle. These transplanted vessels are called grafts and depending on your condition, your doctor may need to perform more than one coronary artery bypass graft. In most coronary bypass cases, the alternatives to surgery have either already been attempted or have been ruled out by the patient's physical condition. There are many less invasive methods of increasing blood flow through the diseased coronary arteries, including drugs, balloon angioplasty, and stent insertion. All of these methods attempt to reopen coronary arteries without having to resort to major heart surgery. Most likely, your doctor has recommended this procedure because he or she believes that in this case, surgery is in your best interest. Should you decide not to have surgery, the consequences can be severe. If the condition of your coronary arteries continues to worsen, you will almost certainly face increased fatigue, chest pain, and even a heart attack leading to death. While it is true that a coronary bypass is major surgery, don't make a decision to ignore your doctor's recommendations simply out of anxiety or fear. Make sure to discuss all of your options with your doctor. Don't be afraid to share all of your concerns. And above all, don't hesitate to ask questions. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. The anesthesiologist will begin to administer anesthesia, most probably general anesthesia by injection and inhalation mask. The surgeon will then apply an antiseptic solution to the skin and place a sterile drape around the operative site. One or more sections of vein will be taken from the leg, thigh, or chest wall, and the incision at those points will be sutured and bandaged. Then your doctor will make a vertical incision in the center of the chest.
skin and other tissue will be pulled back in order to expose the breastbone. Your doctor will carefully divide the breastbone and a special instrument called a retractor will be used to hold the chest open. Once your doctor has a clear view of the heart, he or she will make an incision in the pericardium, a thin membrane that encloses the heart. Pulling the pericardium back will reveal the beating heart. Next, the surgeon will gently rotate the heart to the right in order to allow access to the heart's underside. Using veins taken from another part of your body, the team will begin to build new paths for blood, bypassing the blocked areas of the old artery or arteries. The team will attach as many new veins as needed to the underside of the heart. Then the doctor will gently rotate the heart back to its normal position. To complete the bypass graft procedure, your doctor attaches ends of the new veins on either side of the diseased area or areas of the old coronary artery. Blood can now flow freely, avoiding the clogged areas that had caused your symptoms. The pericardium can now be closed over the heart. Your doctor will position two separate drainage tubes in the chest cavity. These tubes prevent fluid from building up around the heart during the healing process. The breastbone is closed with metal wire. And the remaining tissue is closed with sutures. A sterile bandage is applied. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, Try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from 1 to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. At some point, you'll be moved to your room. While you're in the hospital, doctors and nurses will regularly check you monitoring your progress following surgery. It's important that you realize your time in the hospital is an extension of the surgical procedure. While you're in the hospital, your medical team will continue to monitor your body's immediate reaction to the procedure just performed. That means that your time in the hospital is not really for rest and recovery, and you should expect to have your movements restricted and even your sleep interrupted by nurses or other medical staff. The amount of time that you spend in the hospital would depend on your age, your health, and whether or not any complications arise. Be assured that once your doctor feels that your condition is properly stabilized, you will be allowed to leave. 
Be sure to follow your doctor's advice and allow the full recommended period of time before you return to your normal routine. At first, you'll be resting in a cardiac intensive care unit where nurses and equipment will monitor your heart and your health around the clock. It's not uncommon to experience an irregular heartbeat following heart surgery, and your doctors need to be able to respond quickly to any abnormalities. Drugs and sometimes a mild electric shock is used to restore the heart to its normal rhythm. When your doctors feel that you are ready, you will be moved to a non-intensive care hospital bed. All heart surgery carries some risk. Possible complications include abnormal heart rhythm, excessive bleeding, infection, and kidney failure, damage to the heart muscle, and in rare cases, stroke. In order to minimize the chances of complications, and to prevent the return of coronary disease, your doctor will probably recommend that you make major lifestyle changes. If you smoke, you will be told to quit. You will also be given dietary and exercise recommendations. To assist you in making these changes, your doctor may choose to enroll you in a rehabilitation program.